Hello! Let's talk about my Xbox Series S streaming setup. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this video, I'm gonna be dropping some knowledge right here. As most of you probably already know, <laughs> I deeply, deeply adore my Xbox Series S. This thing is mighty powerful and I'm putting it through its paces. And we've been doing a lot of streaming lately, straight off this device, and a few of you are interested in my setup. So we're gonna go over everything that I use to stream my Xbox Series S on YouTube, as well as the OBS settings that I use to stream the games. So let's get into it. So besides a good quality internet and a high-speed router, the first thing you're gonna need is the Xbox Series S, or the Series X, or any other gaming device. But before we go any further today, yes, everything we talk about, links down in the description below, please use them. It doesn't cost anything more for you to pay, except uh, I get a little bit of a kickback uh, for sending you to Amazon's way. So it does help me out and it does help with the channel and I'd greatly appreciate it. Now, as I was saying, you know, any gaming device or basically any device that you can connect via HDMI will work in this setup. So, so it's not just limited to the Xbox Series S. Next up, you're gonna need a microphone. That right there, my friends, is the Razer Siren Emote streaming microphone. So what's nice about that microphone is you can set it up to where, you know, if people um, give donations, new subscribers, uh, likes, all that good stuff, you can set the microphone up uh, to your liking to where the front LEDs, where they do different things based upon, you know, the reaction that you're getting. So it's a pretty cool microphone. Sound quality, um, well, I've had issues with it, so that's why I don't always use it to stream my games. As a matter of fact, the majority of the time, I use my Blue Yeti caster whenever I'm streaming or like right now, recording my videos. So next to the Razer microphone, you're gonna have the Elgato HD60S. That, my friends, is going to be the video capture card. So here's gonna be a better look at it. Um, in my full review, I'll talk more about it in detail, uh, but for right now, I'm just gonna show you the connections. So on this side of the capture card, this is where the video HDMI input is placed. So the HDMI that's ran from your Xbox Series S, the back of it, the Series X, or whatever device that you would normally plug in to your TV, you would plug into here. To the right of that, that's gonna be our USB Type-C port. The cable that comes with the device has a USB Type-C on one end and a USB 3.0 port on the other end. So the USB Type-C gets plugged into here, and then the USB 3.0 port gets plugged into your PC. On the other side of the capture card, this is where the HDMI out is going to go. So on this side, you would preferably need an HDMI 2.1 cable that would go from this output to your TV, to your monitor, uh, to whatever uh, video displaying device that you're using. So once you got all that connected, this is how it should look. So on this side is gonna be our TV where the Xbox is connected to the Elgato HD60S, and then the HDMI out is routed from the Elgato to the monitor or TV. We're getting closer, people. So you got that all connected. Now let's hop over to the PC. All right, so as you can see, I have a very basic OBS setup. Um, I got some sources right here. I got an audio mixer right here. Um, it's very, very basic. And depending if I'm playing via the cloud, via Google Stadia or Amazon Luna, uh, these settings might be a little bit different. Uh, but as for right now, with the settings for my Xbox Series S, I have the audio input capture device, which captures the audio coming from the Xbox Series S. I have the video capture device, which is the video part of the Xbox Series S. I also have my desktop audio setup, so in case I wanna play any audio from my computer, I could do that as well. And of course, I got my microphone setup, which in this case, I have the blue Yeti caster. Now, when you first download OBS, some there's not gonna be any sources available, so you're gonna have to kind of fiddle around with it to see which sources belong to which um, and set it up accordingly. It does take some tinkering, uh, to get it just the way you want it. But uh, but once you got it set, like that commercial says, you just set it and forget it. 
But let me show you guys the settings that I'm using to export 1080p, 60 frames per second through OBS. So if you open the settings, uh, we got English, theme is dark mode, um, automatically check for updates on startup. So no boxes checked in the output section. Source alignment snapping, I have it enabled. Snap sensitivity, 10.0. Snap source to edge of screen, got that checked. Snap source to other sources, got that checked. Nothing in projectors. System tray is enabled. Nothing in preview. Importers, nothing. Studio mode, I got show preview slash program labels. Multi-view, click to switch between scenes, show scene names, and draft safe areas are all checked. The multi-view layout is horizontal top eight scenes. Then if we go to stream, this is vitally important, not only to keep private, but it's your stream key that's only for you. This is the key that connects OBS to YouTube. So it's very important to have it and to keep it secure. On the output, uh, we got that mode as advanced. Streaming, audio track one, encoder, NVIDIA, in HVNC H2.64 new. We wanna enforce streaming service encoder settings. The bit rate is gonna be control bit rate. That way it stays pretty standard. At 6,000 kilobytes per second, the keyframes is gonna be two. Preset is gonna be max quality. Profile, put it at high, baby. We got look ahead checked and psycho visual tuning checked. Don't ask me what that stuff is. I got this information from a fellow YouTuber. So a lot of these settings are, are what he advised. And now I'm able to share them with you. Sharing is caring. Anyway, GPU is zero, uh, max B frames two. Let me go to the next section in the recording. If you decide to use OBS to record any gameplay, uh, this is the recording path. This is where you're gonna find that video that you just recorded. Audio, uh, I don't, I didn't change anything on this, so it's 160 throughout. Replay buffer, nothing on there either. Now let's go to the audio tab. Sample rate is 44.1 kilohertz. Channel, you'll always want it to be in stereo. Desktop audio, we got speakers, which is the Yeti stereo microphone, and that is so I can hear the desktop audio through my headphones which is connected to the Yeti caster. Desktop audio two, same thing. The mic auxiliary audio, it's gonna be the microphone, which is the Yeti caster. The mic audio two, three, and four, disabled, because I don't have additional mics. Decay rate, fast. Peak meter type, sample peak. The advanced section, uh, monitoring device, is gonna be default. And then you're gonna have it checked, disabled windows audio ducking. And then the hotkeys, I haven't done anything with the hotkeys. Next, let's go to video. Base canvas resolution is going to be 1920 by 1080. Output is going to be the same thing, 1920 by 1080. Downscale filter is going to be the Lankinus. <laughs> Sharpening scaling, 36 samples. And common frames per second values is going to be 60. That's how I get my 60 frames per second. Hotkeys, nothing there. Advanced. Processing priority is going to be normal. Render direct 3D 11. Color format, NV12, color space, 709, color range, full. Uh, recording, file formatting, you leave that alone. Stream delay, you leave that alone. Automatic reconnect, you have it enabled at 10 seconds, maximum 20. Network is default. Sources, enable browser source hardware acceleration. And hotkeys, never disable hotkeys. And that's it as far as my OBS settings. So now let's jump over to YouTube so I can show you guys how I create the live stream. Okay, so here we have my YouTube Studio channel dashboard. So YouTube, they want you to upload videos, they want you to go live, and they want you to put posts on your community tab. That's what these three buttons are. Upload video, go live, create a post. But you can also do it up here where it says create. You click on this, upload videos, Go live, create a post. Pretty simple. So you wanna go live. You click on go live. Then we'll bring you to this other page where the live streaming scheduling happens. So right here, we're gonna manage a live stream. We're gonna create one right now. So I'm gonna click schedule stream. If you've done previous live streams before, 
then you could use this to reuse any previous old settings from your previous live streams. So we'll just click on the latest one and we'll click reuse settings. Now here's where you're gonna set up the stream. So you're gonna name it of course, you could put it as public, unlisted, private, or only allow channel members. So we're gonna do a private for this one. Here's where you're gonna put some additional information, maybe some information about the game, maybe a few links to affiliates, maybe different products that you feature in the video or anything else you can put here in the body. You also wanna put at the very bottom or at the very top, I prefer it at the very bottom, but these hashtags. You could do up to three hashtags that would associate your video with a hashtag. So they say it helps in getting your videos out there to different types of people. I don't know if it does, I just do it every time. The next section is where you're gonna put uh, what type of video it is. In this case, we got a gaming video. And whenever you do a gaming video, a gaming stream, you can type in the actual game that you're actually streaming. So what's nice about this feature is it'll have a picture of the game kind of at the top and it'll give you know some options in making a purchase or that sort of thing. Here's where you're gonna have the date that you're gonna do the stream. You're gonna set up the time. If you're able to do that, you can turn that on. Here's where you're gonna choose your thumbnail and you have to certify down here if this video is made for kids. And further down in the advanced section for this stream, there's gonna be an age restriction. So you can choose if this stream is gonna be, you know, for adults only. And if you choose to do that, then there's gonna be limited or no ad monetization. So that's kind of tough right there. But you wanna be honest because if you're not, you know, eventually it'll probably catch up to you and, and you, want, you don't wanna put in all this work and then get screwed over, you know what I mean? So once you got all that filled out, you're gonna hit create. And eventually that stream will come up as an upcoming stream. There we go. So what I do, and I don't know if this is what you're supposed to do, but this is what I do. So I go back to the studio and then I click on videos and then I go to live. And then we got the upcoming stream, which is right here. And I click on view and live control room. So this is gonna be your stream. We got the title right here, the category gaming, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, privacy is gonna be private, monetization we got on, scheduled for December 1st, 2020 at 7.55 p.m. Uh, you're gonna get a preview right here once you start streaming in OBS. And down here is gonna be your stream settings. This is your stream key right here. It's blocked out because like I said, it's gotta stay private. So this code right here is what you copy and paste into OBS so that way it connects to your YouTube stream. Enable auto start, I got that off. Enable auto stop, got that off. Enable DVR, so that way you can rewind it in the middle of the stream in case you missed like the earlier part. 360 video, got that off. Uh, added delay, none. Closed captions, off. Unlist live replay once stream ends, I got that off because I want it to be there and available and for more people to watch if they want to uh, as the stream ends. Analytics, this is gonna show your concurrent views, your chat rate, your playbacks, and your average watch time. Viewer activity is gonna show if you got any super chats or members. Stream health, uh, this is where it's gonna tell you if you have any issues with your stream. If it's good and data is being received and it's, you know, stream is fine, you have a green dot right here and it'll say stream is great. And then right here is where the live chat happens. So you chat it up in here, you say whatever you want. Um, on my end, at least, I can respond back to your, to your chats. But a majority of the time, you know, I'm playing the game, so so I'll respond audibly, and I won't type in my response right here. This is pretty much there, so I could say hello, and I could say goodbye or good night at the very end. That's kind of what I use it for. So now we got it all set up, and the fun is about to begin. So I split my screen just like that. On the left hand side, we got OBS open. I can see my game right there. On the right hand side, we got YouTube open. I could see my stream right here. I'm good to go. So now let's just click start streaming. And in a few seconds, as you saw right here, it's got a green dot and it says excellent connection. We got our preview right here. 
We got a little pop-up that says, go live, looks like you're ready. Click here to start streaming. So you're good there, you're good there, you're good here. Now you just click go live when you're ready to get started streaming. So I really hope that that behind the scenes, you know, kind of shows you exactly, you know, what you got to do to set up a live stream. I mean, there's a hundred other ways that you can do this. Um, that's just my setup. So of course, if you want to pick up anything that I featured here, or if you have any questions, uh, check the links out in the description below, or just leave a comment and I'll definitely get back to you as soon as I can. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell to make sure you're in the loop for all things handsome gadgets. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up before you leave as it definitely helps out the channel quite a bit. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at handsome gadgets. Thank you and have a good one.